Hi everybody, welcome to Days and Lauren. We'll be speaking about Amazon, the World Economic Forum, and what some jobs are going to look like in the future. And 100,000 people are going to be trained for free to be cloud specialists. And what does this mean for you and me? Uh, what does this mean for the world? And why is the World Economic Forum uh, driving things that Amazon is doing in South Africa? Why is it so important for them to build their headquarters on uh, what uh, the Koi and the Sand people believe is sacred ground? Etc. Yes. And, uh, and they yeah. just bulldoze the head. Just bulldoze the head. Yeah. On a river. Yeah, head. over the river. It looks like a mess. But How then goes. Amazon plans to train 100,000 South Africans to do cloud computing for free. For free. They need the people so that they can get our data into the cloud. Let's look at this. Do you remember life before cloud? Windows 97 and Windows Companies 95. are openly with the computers, everything they scan and so on, sending it into the cloud. It doesn't go nowhere. It goes to a data center. And all of that can literally be harvested as information. Can is... Amazon Web Services, the tech subsidiary of the global e-commerce giant, is planning to get 100,000 young South Africans trained as certified cloud computing practitioners for free. The plan centers on AWS's skill center in Cape Town, the first of its kind outside of the U.S. Take note, take note, people. US? Africa is Cape needed. <laughs> they will start in South Africa and bulldoze their way into the rest. And in future, make sure that there's no unwanted people for their projects. AWS Managing Director of Europe, Middle East, Europe and Africa, Tanuja Randari, said at the opening of the center on Wednesday that the company was aiming to promote economic growth and job creation, especially since virtual cloud spending has increased by more than 13% in this country. And it's also, we watched a little video on, on the carbon footprint of just having the cloud. Mm. And it was, they, the cloud uses more energy than Japan itself as a country, the entire country of Japan. She said AWS had invested more than 15 billion rand in SA and supported 5,700 jobs to date. We will continue to invest in the future with over 30 billion rand more. According to the World Economic Forum, there's huge demand for cloud computing talent and it is expected to be a requisite for over 2.6 million jobs globally by 2027. That's around the corner. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I still think we're in 2020. <laughs> yeah, we're heading towards 2024. Yeah. <clears throat> so if anyone's unemployed, <laughs> here's an opportunity. Yeah, to go and uh, check other people's data. The center will be open to people between the ages of 18 and 36. You see, I think... They want the brainwash lot. Not just that. I shudder to think how the elderly is going to be treated in this new system that's being built, smart city system. The free in-person and virtual classes and training courses will be open to people between the ages of 18 and 36 that can acquire certification as an AWC certified cloud practitioner and participate in networking opportunities with industry <coughs> professionals. Class registration can take place at the center or online and can range from six to 14 weeks. The center also has eight exhibits to illustrate how cloud computing is used in things such as live translation services, sports, sustainability projects, space exploration, and gaming. Here we go. DA at the forefront. Yes. Your Western Cape Premier, Ellen Windy, said at the launch that the center would play an important part in alleviating the country's ongoing unemployment crisis by helping the youth with skills to make them more employable in the future. Not just more employable. It's like literal internet spies. Hmm. Okay, let's continue. We are looking forward to working with AWS to bring powerful training. Just take note, the provincial government is looking forward to working with a global corporate. Absolutely. To bring powerful training resources. And they probably affected the court case too. To the citizens of South Africa by investing in our people and their future. Is that, a, is that the only way to invest though? Seriously, oh, word, yeah. we also invest in South Africa's future and advancing our stature in the global economy. Global economy, people, not South African economy. You see, it doesn't matter to these freaking idiots. Yeah, a lot of wind, nah? Speaking to News24, Wendy also confirmed that there had been ongoing discussions with Amazon about providing other services in the province, including for possible Amazon retail warehouses. Wow. Have you seen the massive take-a-lot warehouse in Cape Town? It's enormous. It's 
it's not taking the, a bit of strain right now i'm sure it's not exactly the future i envision and i think this this last little bit just reminded me of a famous quote by jacob zuma a long time ago media journalists were laughing at him he said our people do not need jobs they need land Mm -hmm. and land is what gives you freedom land is what gives you opportunities we gave land sacred land to a foreign company in cape town and they are now going to control uh, what happens in the cloud from here train our people for free to do that for them and the international cohorts it's unethical it's terrible disgraceful <laughs> it's disgraceful but one anyway. needs to look at what's happening and then multiply it because that's what the future is going to look look like. At, the, at, at this stage, you know, I feel like the people that think that this is a good thing, um, I can't wait to see them suffer. Actually, yeah. At the end of this, when when they actually see their freedom gone, because <laughs> of this, because it'll happen so fast. That transition when you support things like this, if you don't have the vision and the foresight, you deserve to suffer. Because only through extreme suffering will you change. And I, I, I just want that to, to happen as soon and as fast as possible so we can get on mm. uh, with creating a new uh, future for this country where freedom is possible. I started the Organic Humanity Movement and this kind of development that's taking place as well as many other developments we read about is the opposite of organic humanity. It's inorganic and it's inhumane. And that is, that's the beauty of the name. And I didn't realize it had so much meaning until, until more and more of these things came to light. We want to create organic way of living that is humane for human beings. And I'm afraid of what the future is going to look like for my children. And that's why I work every single day to change that. The irony is they're actually using humans here to make sure that humans become irrelevant in future. And if, if you don't have that foresight, as I said earlier, you deserve to suffer and should suffer for it. Because then you might change. But certain things have a, a line that when you cross it, it's very difficult to come back from, isn't it? I think we've crossed quite a few lines. We, by we, I mean all of society around the globe. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, there's only one way to circumnavigate that. And that's to create individual strength the way we are through training through the workshops we're doing and as that multiplies we can start to create a reality different to what is being created for us without our consent right now